Time for my boat. This past season, rising fuel costs have been a concern to all boaters. This week at our My Boat segment, we'll take a look at some products and some things you can do to keep boating at the previous year's fuel charges. Many of you may have probably tried to track your fuel consumption on paper, but there is only one reliable way, and that is electronically. The heart of the system are the fuel flow transducers we installed and the software in the unit that calculates fuel flows and efficiency using input from the transducers and the system's GPS. To get our readings, we headed out to calibrate the unit and record the baseline fuel consumption prior to working on improving fuel efficiency. At the boat's cruise setting of 3600 RPM, we recorded fuel flows of 19.36 and 19.83 gallons per hour for the Mercruiser 454s. We've had the boat out for a run and we've set our base fuel consumption numbers tracking it on the Navman. Now it's time to do the first thing that you can do yourself to improve your fuel economy and that's a complete tune-up. In this case we're going to be installing brand new spark plugs, new wires, new rotor and a new cap, a full complete ignition system on this Mercury. Step one in the tune-up was to replace all of the spark plugs in both engines with a newer hotter plug as specified by Mercury Marine. Replace one plug at a time to ensure that you keep the right ignition wire going to each cylinder. Ensure that each plug is torqued down to the manufacturer's settings without over tightening and stripping the threads. After changing all of the plugs, I next tackled replacing the spark plug wires with new OEM wires. Again remember to replace one wire at a time to avoid changing the firing order and finish off by reinstalling the retaining clips to keep the wires neat and from wearing. After replacing all of the plugs and wires, the next task was to replace the cap and rotor on the distributor. Start by removing the four screws holding the cap in place. Next align the new cap to match the old by referencing the cylinder numbers on the cap and switch the ignition wires over to the corresponding location one wire at a time. When complete, remove the old cap and rotor by pulling gently. Press the new ignition rotor into place using the keyway on the shaft and rotor to correctly align the rotor and press it into place firmly. Next reinstall the cap and finally hook up the new coil wire and get ready to set the ignition timing. But in our case, I moved on to the second engine and the carburetors. Well, we've done the first part of our hunt for better fuel efficiency with these 454s. We've done the tune-up, which is pretty straightforward, but now we're going to get into something a little bit more complicated. We're going to replace the carburetors with a set of rebuilt ones. And here to help me is Eve from Queen's Cove Marina. Well, Eve, is this uh, swapping out a carburetor something a do-it-yourselfer should take on on their own? Yeah, well, it depends on how comfortable you are with, uh, with uh, working with fuel systems and electrical systems. Uh, it is your boat, and if you're comfortable doing it with uh, your car or small engine equipment at home, there's no reason why you can't. Just make sure you're real clean with your work and double check everything. We started by removing the cover and flame arrestor to get at the carburetor. Next, we removed the throttle cable from the throttle linkage and cable mounting bracket, then the mounting nuts, bracket, and throttle return spring. Care must be taken when removing the fuel line, so you must use a specialty line wrench to avoid rounding off the connector. After removing the last two mounting bolts, the carburetor can be removed. Prior to installing the replacement carb, the mating surface on the manifold must be cleaned thoroughly and a new dry gasket set in place. The mercury remanufactured carb is set in place and then bolted down with the throttle cable mount in place and the fuel line reattached, again using a line wrench. The choke linkage was reattached and the throttle cable was installed reusing the bushings and hardware. Next the flame arrestor was installed and we are ready to set up the ignition timing and carb settings. Using an accurate shop tack and timing light, Ease began the process of dialing in the correct ignition timing to the manufacturer's specs at idle. Finally, he set the idle mixture on the carb by leaning it out until the engine lost RPM, then enriching it until it lost RPM, and then the setting was set between the two. I believe that was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. Thank you very much for your help. Appreciate it. And next up, I guess we'll take her out for a run and see how much we've improved our fuel efficiency. After warming up the engines and getting up on plane at my boat's cruise setting of 3600 RPM, the Navman reported fuel flows of 18.7 and 16 gallons per hour. Combined and average, the tune-up and remanufactured carb will cut my fuel usage by about 12% or over 100 liters per fill-up. 